God with our finances. Um, we probably have many questions about how to do with our money. If God wants us to have money or not. And we are here to be good stewards of what God gives us. And as we review what we have learned so far, we were talking about treasuring uh, treasures in heaven or store treasures in heaven. That's what Jesus said in uh, this uh, verse 24 and from 19 to 24. So what are the treasures? Remember what we talked so far? Treasures are no money. Treasures are no talents that we accumulate in this world. But treasures are, remember? What are treasures? People. <laughs> yes, people. Treasures are people. Uh, I was sharing with one of the co-pastors in, in this church. I was sharing about, he asked me, well, are you still teaching Matthew? I said, yes, I'm still teaching Matthew. Um, because uh, this uh, pastor also uh, was teaching Matthew this year. And, and say, well, oh, so do you finish Matthew? I say, no, I'm still in chapter 6. I say, why? Oh, because I teach in the, the Sermon of the Mount. And then I ask this question. Do you know about this, this teaching of, of uh, serving God or money? And I asked to this pastor, what are treasures? And he also, like many people, say, well, treasures are money. Treasures are talents. Treasures are uh, our salvation or our faith. And say, wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> All his answer. And he say, treasures in heaven are people. And he didn't realize that and say, yeah, you are right. Treasures in heaven are, are people. And I explain, of course, all the sermons that I already gave to you. I say, what professor say that? I say, no professor say that. Just the, the Bible said that. And I say, oh, so what is your source of, of, of analyzing or interpreting this scripture? Well, many years of preaching and many pastors who mentored me in the past. But you probably could interpret the scripture in different way. And you probably could not agree with me in my interpretation of the scripture, but yes, that's what I believe and that what can demonstrate through the Bible that in heaven we have to accumulate people's soul, people's life. I mean, what can you take from this world? Your beautiful house, your beautiful apartment, your beautiful car, your bank account, your beautiful clothes, or like this pastor said this morning. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, dang. I said, you don't need the fruit of the Spirit in heaven. You need the fruit of the Spirit in earth, not in heaven. In heaven, you have Jesus and you, are, you have everything that you need. You have no lack in heaven. So you don't bear fruits of the Spirit in heaven. You don't store fruit of the Spirit in heaven. You store fruit of the Spirit here in earth. So it's not the fruit of the Spirit. People need to be in heaven. You have to send as much as you can people to the kingdom of God. In other words, you have to save people's life. You have to save people's soul. Because that's why we are for, as Christians and, and as people of God, we are here to antagonize in, in some way to this world to rescue those who are as the founder of the uh, Salvation Army said, those who are digging into the ocean of sin in this world and rescued it so they can be saved in the kingdom of God. So we need to accumulate these treasures, these people that God came from heaven, as in the parable of the kingdom of God, to buy with his own blood for these souls so he can treasure it all of them in heaven. How are we going to use our money then? We have to use our money to invest more in church programs of evangelization and mission. Not just to enjoy some performance or yes, we need sometimes this money to be invested in church to have good fellowship. But the priority for the church is to disciple more people and to save more people. 
and also to go and send more missionaries until Jesus come back. Because Jesus won't come back to earth until all people in this world have heard the gospel. And all peoples can confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Until that not happen, then what we are using with our money is just temporarily here. It's useless here. But if we are investing in souls to get into the kingdom of God in heaven, then our investments will have fruits. And if we use these worldly wealth or treasures to gain souls in heaven, these friends that we are gaining with these worldly treasures will welcome us in heaven when we depart from this world. Then we say that we need to have only one master or be faithful to one master because this war put us in, in this position that or we love money and the Bible said in the King James Version Mammon or we love God or we despise money or we despise God or we hate money or we hate God now money in, in itself is not good or bad it's neutral but the spirit that we put in money is what is good or bad you can use money to send missionaries once again to evangelize other cult cultures and countries you can use money to have more discipleship trainings you have money to build churches and to continue with fellowship that Christian need so money is necessary it's necessary for our life it's necessary for our health it's necessary for our education yes schools Christian school demand tuition fee and without tuition fee you cannot enter in these institutes so you need money for paid tuition fees so money is not bad the problem is when we try to idolatry what we accumulate or what we do with money that's the problem if we try to serve money rather than to serve God that's a wrong interpretation of what we are doing here in this world and what we are created for so we have to worry how we gonna use money we have to think how we're gonna invest money and how we're gonna gain more people into the kingdom of heaven with money as we do that then the spirit that we have the Holy Spirit in our hearts will be in our finances and God will multiply and will bless that finances that we if we need more money to gain more people in heaven God will pour out more to our life if you need a car to go to evangelize he will give you a car he will give you a bigger house to go to have Bible studies or, 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 or Christian fellowship meetings God will give you a, a wider house why not but the problem is what kind of heart you have what kind of intention you have uh, to use money yes we are here to be faithful in little because God wants to strength, uh, entrust in us in more the Bible says as we say the last week in Luke 16 he who is faithful in what is lead is faithful also in much and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much so how much you have how much God entrusts in you how much you are investing in the kingdom of God if you have this little you are faithful in this little that you have God will entrust you more souls more people's life and he will supply all your needs so you can gain more people to the kingdom of God what is your attitude uh, about all the resources that you have to gain more people are you faithful in little then God will put you in more yes we worry many times and we worry for everything there's a point that is written by King Petrus and it says like this don't worry about tomorrow don't worry at all worry makes you a servant to your doubts and fears for you are believe, believing in sins that made you afraid instead of worry have faith in Jesus by believing in his promise 
by relying on his strength, by living your life in his hand, by living your burdens in his care, and by trusting him in all your needs. Having faith in the Lord Jesus frees you from your debts and fears. Then don't worry about tomorrow. Choose Jesus rather than your fears. Leave what makes you afraid in his mighty hands and don't worry. Today we are talking about worries. And we are talk talking about overcoming worries. And we have to understand what are worries. So you have your bulletins with you, right? So there's questions there to challenge you to concentrate in this sermon today. Because we have to understand what are worries according to the Bible. What is the definition of worry? And if we're talking about worries also, we have to talk about fear. Because it's fear that makes us worry. So we are here to understand that God is bigger than our worries and God is bigger than our fears. So let's see. If God is bigger than our worries and he's bigger than our fears, then what we worry about? What we what we have fears. And, and let's put this in, 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 in our economic. We worry so much about money because we have fear that we're going to lose money. But God is greater than money. God is greater than our savings. Why we, we don't trust in God? Why we don't trust our finances in God? He is the one who has the responsibility to give us every day our daily bread. He promised us. He said, if we are faithful just going and collecting the everyday manna, you don't need to worry about the, the Sabbath. He will supply for you for the Sabbath. You just need to be faithful in your daily little sins, and He will put you more when the times come. Always Chamber says <clears throat> once when he was alive, <clears throat> next please all our fret and worries is caused by calculating without God once again all our fret and worry is caused by calculating without God in other words in your economy in your financial life is God in the equation when you add to your plans, is God in the equation? When you try to multiply your finances, is God in the equation? If God is not in the equation, then you are not calculating with God. In other words, He is not your partner. And if God is not your partner, you're going to have a wrong plan of business. And you sooner or later, you're going to have a Bankrupt first spiritually, then materially. I like what Francis Chan said. Worry implies that we don't quite trust that God is big enough, powerful enough, or loving enough that take care of what happened in our life. The problem is that we don't trust God that He will provide for our life. We try to put this God of money, called it Mammon, bigger than God. And we think that God is powerless in front of this God of money, Mammon. And that's why we fail in trusting God. And instead to say that God is enough for us, God is bigger than our problems, our finances, He's powerful enough for supplying all our needs, we start to worry and we start to have fear. I want to share with you this morning what I learned from Pastor David Jeremiah. David Jeremiah, he recently uh, uh, published his Bible. And the New King's Church Version Bible Commentary from Pastor De David Jeremiah, he talks in this chapter 6 about overcoming worries. And we see in the chapter 6 that three times the Lord Jesus said, do not worry. Verse 30, 25, 31, and 34. Why 
we have to worry when there's no reason to worry. And there are five reasons why we should not worry according to the Lord. First, worry is inconsistent. Second, worry is irrational. Third, worry is ineffective. Four, worry is illogical. And fifth, worry is irreligious. I agree with Pastor Jeremiah in this analysis of chapter 6. And we can find it. Why? First, worry is inconsistent. Verse 25 says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you, sh what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is no life more than food and the body more than clothes? In other words, if God created us, and he give us this body, he will also close us, giving us everything that our body needs, food, clothes, shelter. Why we have to worry about what we have to put on this body when we have an honor of this body? If God is the master of your life, if he is your Lord, your Savior, he will take care of your body. He will take care of all that your body needs. So we don't need to worry. And it's inconsistent to worry about for something that is so obvious. In other words, if God started to supply the bigger thing, why he cannot supply the small thing? Is God supply for our body, health, organs, and everything that we have, limbs, to live in this world, why he won't supply for us everything to close it, to fit it, to protect it. This body has to be entrusted to God. Our body has to be entrusted to God. We have to trust God so we don't worry about our body. If we, says Jeremiah, if we can trust Jesus to provide us with our life, can we not also trust him with our daily needs? Then second, worry is irrational. Verse 26 says, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow or reap, nor gather, nor burn, yet your heavenly Father feed them. Are you not more valued than that day? Worry is, ir is irrational. Have not, it's have no sense because if you, if our Lord cares for the bears, he will not also care for us since we are more valuable than the bears. I was teaching this morning to kids about Psalms 8. And Psalms 8 say that God created us and he put us in a position a little lower than angels. We are above creation. And God, when created Adam and Eve, he said, Multiply and subdue the air. Fill the airs and, 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 and rule all creation that I gave it for you. So we are above all creation. If God then take care for the bears that he created and we are above of his creation, why he won't take care about us? Is it rational? Is it logical? Two. Third is ineffective. Verse 26. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Jeremiah said, Who can add one cubit or a lens for the elbow to the teeth or the middle of the finger to our, our stature by worrying? Nobody. But this Bible verse, or this verse 27, doesn't talk about our stature, actually. They Right interpretation from this bird is that who can add one more day of life? Who can add by worrying one more day of life? Actually, if you worry, you're going to discount one day of your life. <laughs> I would say. Because worry will not make you sick. And you're going to die because of these worries. Yes, we are celebrating probably the days of our departure of this world by worrying so much. People worry so much, and when they don't have worry, they worry because they don't, they don't have worries. As crazy as it sounds. But that's what we are. 
when we don't know what we have and who is with us. Proverbs 27, one said, Do not boss about tomorrow, for you do not know what day may bring forth. Why we worry about tomorrow if we are not yet tomorrow? Why we worry about if we're going to live tomorrow if we don't live first today? How by worrying about tomorrow you're going to live one more day? It's ineffective. Worrying about to live one more day or not depends on what you believe and in who create you and who can provide for you every day. Number four, worry is illogical. Verse 28 and 30. So why do, wor do you worry about clothing? Consider the lies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil or spin. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, why he not much more clothes you, or you, little faith? So if God can close the lights of the field, can he not also close us? So this, this verse 28, 30 is connected with the previous verse. Worry about dream, worry about eating, worry about our body. So it's illogical and it's inconsistent to worry about that something that logically we are said by faith that God takes care of our body because He created our body and because our body belongs to God. And 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 5 said that we have to give our body to God and honor Him and keep Him pure. So He has the promise to take care of our bodies. Actually, Jesus is the head of the church and we, the church, are His body. So if we are the body of Christ, why not he's going to take care of his body? So why we worry about what we're going to clothe? Or how we're going to cover our body? But once again, this Bible verse is not talking about clothes. Because if we were redundant with the previous Bible verse. What is the interpretation of this verse is if God closes the shame of Adam and Eve when they were naked in the Garden of Eden, how he will cover you, your iniquity, your shamefulness for what you have done. It's illogical to think that God who say already, I forgive all your sins, past, present, and future, for just trusting what I did and what I paid on the cross of Calvary, that you worry that your sins won't be forgiven. Do you trust that God forgives your sins? Do you trust that God covers you with his blood, your nakedness? Because when we are sinners and in front of God, as Christians and believers, we know that we are with a way out. We cannot run away from God. He knows everything before we commit sin, while we commit sin, and after we commit sin. Now, can we trust in God that He will cover our iniquity? That we, He will close us again with righteousness and grace? Worry is inconsistent. Worry is irrational. Worry is ineffective. Worry is illogical. And number five, worry is irreligious. Verse 31, 32 says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these sins, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these sins. So, worry is irreligious because when we worry, we are just like those who do not know God. In this case, the Gentiles. In other words, we are acting like no believers, like no Christians, if we worry. Because people who worry about what to eat, what to drink, they are 
running after them, and that, that's why they don't come to church, that's why they don't pray to God, that's why they don't read the Bible, that's why they, don't, they, they want to be anti-religious, because they know that in their own strength and power and control, they can supply their own needs. So why we need God to supply our needs if we can supply ourselves, they said. So if we worry like them and we are after those things like they do, then we are anti-Christians. The spirit of Antichrist is in us. An evil spirit is in us. So worry is not Christian. Worry is evil. But you say, Pastor, then it's a sin to worry. I worry every day. But I don't live in worry. There are people who live in worry, to move to live with worry. That's sin. In other words, there are people who want to embrace worry. And once again, if they don't have worries, they worry about those worries that they don't have. They want to worry of something because if they don't worry, oh, something's going to happen, something's going to happen, everything's okay. But they are worried that nothing happened. That everything is okay. And they're worried because they don't, they don't have worries. Do you find this kind of patients? Do you meet this kind of patients? There are many in this world. They worry because they have no worries. And they, therefore they create more worries. This is an evil spirit. This is not the spirit of God. And why? I can demonstrate that because if you have worries, you have fears. And the source of your worries is fear. Now what the Bible said about fear? Did you read the book of First? The first letter of John, in chapter 4, said, Fears is not from God. Love is from God. Love casts away all our fears. If you have God with you and you have the love of God, you should have no fears. But you worry and then you fear. You fear that you won't have enough money. You fear that you won't have... Uh, uh, the, the uh, money to cover your debts or you won't have uh, this or that in the future and then you worry about tomorrow so much that your worries become a fear and this fear becomes so big to you that you cannot see God in your future even though God is today with you in your present and that's why as Jesus said three times in this chapter 6, do not worry, do not worry, do not worry. We have to have some systems of priorities in our life to overcome these worries. And the answer is in verse 33. Because Jesus gave us one priority to look after. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these sins shall be added to you. We have to prioritize in our life what are most important sins. Once again, where are our treasures? In earth or in heaven? What is our priority? To have a comfortable life or to gain more souls for God? Doesn't mean that we're going to give away everything that we have and like Jesus said, give everything to the poor and you will have riches in heaven. But what God wants to tell us is, what is your priority? Everything that He is supplying in your life is for His kingdom, is for His glory, or is for you to have your own glory. To say, well, by my strengths I have this, by my studies I have this, by my war I have this, and that's why I enjoy all this, because I did all this, and I make all this. And the Lord Jesus will say that day when you go to heaven, you fool. And everything that you have accumulated will be for who? We need priorities, assistance of priorities. So I cannot tell you what you have to prioritize in your life because I'm not in your finances. But you know what how to prioritize. And we're going to talk about this next Sunday. Because you have to separate something. You have to sit, to plant, 
and when you sit and you plan and you know that this is secure in God, you don't need to worry about tomorrow. So we, if we have a system of priorities, we also need a strategic program. 34 says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is our, our trouble. Now, if you have troubles of today, why do you have to worry about the troubles of tomorrow? Now, don't confuse. Worry doesn't mean you won't plan. Because if we have worries, because we have to make a plan. Plan is okay. Jesus planned. He encouraged us to have plans. If you go, he said, to a war and you don't plan about the strategies of this war, probably you're going to be defeated in the middle of the war. If you try to build a, a tower and you don't calculate, you don't have a plan, then who knows that you, wanna, you won't finish this project, say Jesus. Then plan is okay. But worry, that's no. That's against God's plan. You can planify about next year. You can planify about your future. But you don't need to worry about it. Be wise, ask God for wisdom, then be faithful in your tithes, then trust the Lord for your daily bread, and then let the tomorrow come to you. If you have the, strateg the strategic program for just live with the manna that you have received today, for today, then you don't need to worry about the manna of tomorrow. You don't need to worry about the manna of the Sabbath. In other words, you don't need to worry when you won't have more resources or more power to go to look for more finances or support. God promised He will supply even though you won't have the strength or the ability to get there. Why? Because if you were faithful in little, He will give you more. Worries does not take away tomorrow, of course, but worries can also bring troubles to our life. Worries does not take away tomorrow's trouble, it takes away today's peace. If you have today a worry, you won't have peace in your heart, in your soul, in your life, with your family, with your friends. Something will be Resemble it in your face. You know when someone is worried, you can read his eyes, you can read his face. You can hear how their voice tremble or are sharpened because they have a worry. And if you ha have worry, you are not in peace with yourself and you are not in peace with others. And whatever, ev whatever anybody say about to you or to you, then he worries you, and then you attack and respond with a bad word. Worries take away peace. What the Bible said about worries, what the Bible encourages, we have to overcome worries. How we overcome worries? Prioritizing, have an strategic program for today, have plans for today, and live tomorrow, bring their own evil, so we can have a fight for a day, and tomorrow will be another day when we get there. You cannot live tomorrow without living today. First, live today, and let tomorrow come to live another day. There are many people, they don't live today because they, are, they try to live tomorrow. I say to my wife yesterday, we will have a family worship, and I say, okay, I want to give you the primary of this sermon. And I say, what we have to worry about tomorrow? What we have to worry about our finances? We have so much expenses, yes, but God is supplying all our needs. Then what we don't enjoy? God's blessing. And let tomorrow be tomorrow. But let's focus on what God's calling is to Extend the kingdom of God in us. And then, if we are living today 
as it will be the last day of our life, we don't need to, care, to worry about tomorrow. How many lives we give to the Lord today? How many people we pray for? How many people we encourage to believe in God? How much money we invest? Probably it's a, it's a cup of coffee. Maybe, maybe it's a, just a phone call. It's a text message to someone to say, hey, can I pray for you? Hey, can, there's a hope for, for you problem. Hey, there, there, there's a God who cares for you. If we have these friends and we know they are in need and they don't believe in God like we, why don't we go for them so we can have treasures in heaven? The Bible says in Psalms 55:22, Cast your burdens on the Lord, and He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. And Peter says the same. Cast all your care upon Him. He cares for you. We have to just, today, throw away to the cross of Jesus all this worry. These heavy loads that you are carrying the whole week, just leave it here. Don't take it home to, today. Just leave it here in, in this altar. Leave it here in, in this offering time. This, living here in the cross of Jesus. Living here in this place. Get out of this room free of these worries. Free of these burdens. Because God promised He will supply your need. The pinnacle of the Bible verse about worries in the New Testament comes from the Apostle Paul. In his verse four, 6 and 7, in chapter 4 of Philippians, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So worry about anything. But instead, pray about everything. I don't know if you know Helen Maliko. She wrote a poem. I started this sermon with a poem. I want to finish this sermon with a poem. And he called it this poem, My Name is I Am. And let's read together what she wrote. Helen Maliko says, I was regretting the past and fearing the future. Suddenly, my Lord was speaking. My name is I Am. When you live in the past with its mistakes and regrets, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I was. When you live in the future with its problems and fears, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I will be. When you live in this moment, it is no harm. I am here. My name is I Am. God is here. God is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. But He is here right now. He is not in your past. He already was in your past. And before you pass, He was already there. He is today. He will be tomorrow, yes. But tomorrow still didn't come. You have to enjoy God today. Enjoy His Word. Enjoy His Word. Enjoy His presence. He is with you. He is supplying all your needs. Cast away all your burdens, all your worries, because He cares for you. All your cares, give it to God today. He is with you. He is here with us. His name is Emmanuel. And that's why we give incense. Because we are not anxious about the things that pagans or Gentiles, no Christians worry. It's irreligious. It's irrational. It's illogical. It's inconsistent. It's ineffective to worry. Because if we have God with us, who can be against us? If God is for us, then we don't need to worry about tomorrow. We don't need to worry about the past. We just need to enjoy His grace and favor for today. That's why He's here with us. That's why He brought this message to you. So, 
Let's do it. And let's have this war in our mind the rest of this week. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Prayer can give you peace in your worries. Just hand it to God. He will care for you. Trust Him. And the Lord will supply everything that you need. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today's message and thank you for being here with us. Lord, we have so many worries. And these worries are not because of what we have today. The worries are for what we don't have yet tomorrow. But Lord, you are the great I am. The God who is always is and am. Lord, you are God for today. Lord, we just need the manna of today. You just prove it by dying on the cross and proven by giving us this life and this faith that you take care of us. Lord, let us trust you more and live this day like will be the last day of our life, gaining more soul for Jesus, evangelizing and investing in the kingdom of God, supporting the missionaries who are fighting the spiritual fight in those places where the gospel is not yet preached. And Lord, with our testimony and our faith, Lord, let us extend the kingdom of heaven and let the kingdom come. As your will is in heaven, let it be here, in earth, in this church, in CEM, in our family, in our life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have an offering time as we sing our offering song again. Joy and the pain I make in the 